Hallelujah. You know, we are, we're becoming the person that God says who we are. You know, there's a, I wish I could have a picture up here of, of who and how God sees us and how we are even now. Um, I, in, in how we started, you know, they always have those uh, those pictures of the before and afters, and they, uh, you know, trying to sell you something usually. So, um, but I'm not trying to sell you anything; trying to get something to you. Amen. It doesn't cost you anything. Praise God. We just receive the. Yeah, it didn't cost you anything; it just cost you everything. Uh, all God, uh, all God wants is uh, is all of us. So praise God. I think some of the mid-range on this sounds a little hollow right this morning. Um, I want you to make this declaration of uh, uh, over us as a confession this morning. I choose to live a godly life before my family and friends. I am disciplined concerning the priorities of my life. I manage my time in an effective and efficient manner. I am sensitive to the needs of my family and friends. I have God's wisdom and discernment concerning all my decisions. I am loving, caring, and compassionate toward others. I keep my cool during times of stress. And I know that's a stretch of faith. I mean, that's a that's a that's a that's a work of faith right there. It's, we're believing for something, amen. And do not become frustrated and lose my temper, even though people do the same things over and 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 over. It's like, when are you ever going to get over? No, that's just my little addendum there. <laughs> If I do something that is wrong or offensive, I am quick to repent. That sounds really good, brother, by the way. Because I live a spirit-controlled life, I am peaceful, consistent, and faithful. I walk in love at all times. And I am quick to provide encouragement and inspiration to those who need it. I know the voice of the Holy Spirit and I am quick to obey His voice. God's presence and peace adorn my life like a beautiful gown. God's grace and favor are a crown upon my head. This is good, ain't it? Hallelujah. I'm, I'm, we're just, yeah, whatever. <laughs> you know, back years ago, men actually wore uh, gowns, you know, back in, back in way back in the day. Still do in the Middle East. Uh, His goodness and mercy follow me all the days of my life. Now, now family, uh, let me, uh, let me just say this. Uh, there, there are folks that, if you begin to make a confession like that, they're, they're, they're saying that they'll tell you, "Well, you're just lying." Well, you know, we want to have the same spirit of faith that David did. You know, when David went through uh, difficult times in, and I believe it's Psalm 116, I believe it is, but uh, when, when Remember, David put himself through some really difficult situations in his life. I mean, he messed up with Bathsheba. He killed Uriah. I mean, you know, all these things. And then, and then you know, when he was confronted, he repented. But you know what? He said, I believed, therefore I have spoken. He said, I believed, therefore I have spoken. And what he believed was that in spite of the things he was going through, he believed God was able to rescue him. Even though he didn't deserve rescuing, God rescued him. And he kept that in mind, that God was for him and not against him. Let's pray this morning. Father, what we believe is so very important in our walk with you. 
because believing and doing leads to a life of faith and trust in you. But God, before we came to you, our life was so messed up with wrong believing. We believed so many lies and we lived such a life that just today we look back and it doesn't uh, doesn't even look like we're the, we're the same person because really we're not. All things truly have become new. We are a new creature in Christ. So today, Father, we just give you this time and I ask you to anoint my lips this morning and help me to speak what you put on my heart. And Father, though we have words on page, Lord, we're not limited by what we know. Lord, we're only limited by what we believe in our heart and can receive. So, Father, today we just want to open our hearts up to receive what you have for us. And I just want you just to receive today from the Holy Spirit what God has for us today. Lord, we just receive. I just want you to make that declaration. I receive. Hmm. Yeah. Thank you, Lord, in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Uh, again, what do, what do you believe today? Are we recording, by the way? Praise the Lord. See, I shouldn't even have to ask that, right? What do you believe today? It's uh, part two in a... In a in a series of who knows how long. Second uh, Corinthians four thirteen actually is a quotation from Psalm, the Psalm that David uh, uh, said. And uh, again, I believe it was Psalm one sixteen, but I didn't uh, didn't actually come with that scripture on my mind other than it just came up. But in Second Corinthians four thirteen, the Apostle Paul basically quotes David and adds his own agreement to it. <laughs> he says, we having the same, what? Spirit of faith. According as it is written, I believed, therefore I have spoken. We also believe, and therefore speak. Now let's go through that just a little, a little slower this time. We're going to put it in, uh, put it on the lower gear here. We have the same spirit of faith as it is written. Now, we can't believe for anything that's not written. We can believe what is written. We can believe the word of God that comes directly to us from the mouth of God. But we can also believe that when we read God's word, it is as though he is speaking to us right now. Now, there's a lot of interpretation, interpolation, and transliteration in here. But there's also just the plain words of God. God said, let there be light, and there was light. Now, we know that you can't, can't dispute that, that God said, and there was light. God divided the light from the dark and called the, day, uh, the, the light day and the dark night. Uh, we know that's, that's a direct quotation from, from, God, uh, from God himself. When, when Moses wrote those words, penned those words, he, he, he just got by inspiration of the Holy Ghost, the Word of God. Now we find in here many places where God said, God said, God said, God said. Now you know that is, that is God speaking to us. And when the Apostle Paul says, we have the same spirit of faith, the same spirit of faith is what? The same spirit of faith as David. When he, when David was going through all he did, what does the scripture say? He encouraged himself in the Lord. When they come to stone him, what did David do? He, he looked to God as his source. He looked to God and, and said, Lord, you're, you're my strength. You're my song. You're my shield. You're my buckler. We get a lot of, we got a lot of psalms that, that really are, are a response to David's falling and coming back into right relationship with God. So some of the things that we read are in the Psalms are, are, not, are not necessarily God speaking to us. It's actually David telling his story. 
It's actually, now there is some prophecy in there of Jesus coming. There are some prophetic words in there. But a lot of what we see here is actually uh, David saying, you know, you know, I have went through all this and, you know, all this happened to me. And now, now I'm just a, basically he, he, he struggled for a period of time. And you can imagine that when somebody comes out of such depths of sin and despair that, there's going to be a period of time when they're writing some stuff that, boy, it doesn't sound quite like that's not, that don't sound like faith talking. It sounds like somebody just moaning and groaning. But, man, I tell you what, we get a little bit of everything in, in Scripture. You know, though, though it may not be a direct quotation from God himself, and it was a quotation from David, he says, Paul says, we have the same spirit of what? As what? As the same spirit of faith as David had who when he was going through the things he did, he cried out and he says, Lord, you're my source. You're my provider. You're my shepherd. You lead me in the paths of righteousness for your name's sake. Though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil because you are with me. And David could say that with confidence, especially when they come to stone him. And he's like, you know, there was nobody there to encourage David. David just said, I encourage myself in the Lord because in that passage where he says, uh, I believed, therefore I spoke in that same passage, he's like, I couldn't trust anybody. He said, I couldn't trust anybody around me. Everybody was against me. But he said, I believed, therefore I spoke. And Paul says, we believe also. We have the same spirit of faith as David. Therefore, we also believe. Therefore, we do something. We speak. We speak. There, we believe also. Therefore, we speak. As, as pastor, I'm continually sharing with you what I believe God's Word is saying to us. Not only do I want to stir up your faith, And faith, by, def by definition, would be believing with the heart and confessing with the mouth. Something. Faith without works is dead. The first work of faith is always speaking. The first work of faith is always speaking. So not only do I want to stir your faith up, I want to continually stir my own faith. I get to stir my faith as I confess God's word daily. And by the way, I started posting Rick Renner's uh, Pastor Rick Renner's um, Sparkling Gems on my Facebook page and I uh, encourage anybody that's on Facebook to uh, to check that out uh, daily because it's, though I can't put the whole devotion on there because he's he's a pretty lengthy preacher, so he's a pretty lengthy <laughs> devoter, you know, and his devotions are really some great, great inspiration in there uh, uh definitions from of the, from the greek and and uh he's he's a greek scholar so he has a good good foundation for doing um for putting this devotion together it's a 365 day devotion but it's a it's a great work and and there's a prayer at the end of each devotion and a confession and then there is a basically a how does this apply to my life kind of thing and uh i found it on uh i found it as an epub at Harrison House and got it loaded on my phone, got it loaded on her phone, got it loaded on my, my laptop and computer. So now anywhere I go, I can get that devotion. That's uh, that's awesome, you know, to be able to just get a word like that whenever I, whenever I have a moment to, to read it. But I'm trying to make that part of my early morning starting the day thing. Before I even put my feet on the floor, I'm getting my phone and, you know, okay, what's, what's God's word have to say <laughs> this morning? Praise God. So, you know, I'm stirring my faith up by confessing God's word daily and being in the word. And, and, and I'm also stirring my faith up by teaching from the word here with you and, and those that we get a chance to teach. A teen challenge, uh, the girls' home, and, you know, wherever we get to go, Palmer Place. Praise God. It, it stirs our faith uh, when we get to uh, declare the word. So in order for my faith to bear fruit, I have to strengthen something I want, I want you to get this I didn't really I never thought about this until this morning when I was um, putting this together and praying about it but we've got to strengthen the core of our believing 
you know, there's a there's a thing now that they're talking about you strengthening your core and and moving your body from your core. I don't know if you've heard that terminology before. It was new to me. My pastor Donna came home from a thing that uh, some ladies went to. Christine Kane. Oh, okay. Uh, but anyway, she said you need to move from your core. Your core is what in your in your gut, your belly area. And you fix your back, fix every part of you. If you'll move from your core, then your whole body will move. Uh, will will move right, and everything will be in alignment. A lot of times we move just kind of haphazardly. We got you know just get up and, and move. You know, but they say if you move from your core, then everything stays in alignment. Everything everything is in alignment, and and we're not going to hurt ourselves. We, you know, people will they'll bend over, and there there are more. Uh, back injuries just by bending over at a desk and picking up a pencil. And you wouldn't think that would hurt anybody just to bend over and pick up a pencil, but there's a lot of people that a disc will slip or something will happen in their back just from doing a simple thing like, but if you move from your core to do things, you move with your core, you're not going to be slouching. You see, that's why they say bend with your knees and not your back. So if you're moving with your core in mind, you're bending in such a way that you're not going to hurt anything, right? And that just didn't really make much sense. You know, I mean, it, it does, but when, when I believe the Holy Spirit spoke this to my heart, we need to strengthen the core of our believing. So if I'm going to move in my faith, if I'm going to believe God, I've got to strengthen the core of what I believe. I've got to continually have a, a source coming in that is strengthening the word that I have received in my heart and continually be confessing that word. And Because, you know, everything around us is competing against that core. If, if the core of our believing says something such as uh, uh, faith without works is dead, you know, there, there's there's a core principle there that faith does something. Then I've got to keep reinforcing that word. And but the the world will will just say, well, you know, all you have to do is have faith in God. Well, what does that mean? What does that mean? You know, have faith in God. You know, that's great. That's a great saying, and it, it means a lot to us. You know, have faith in God. Well, yeah, I'm going to have faith in God. I mean, what else is there? <laughs> Can't have faith in the government. <laughs> David said, "I couldn't even trust those that were closest to me." You know, I mean, that's that's just the you know the the the, the basics. You know, you, you, the one thing that we can count on is God. We develop relationship, and we develop the core of our relationship as we spend time to one another and learn that we can trust one another and all that. But you know, we got to develop the strengthen the core of our believing. My faith is strengthened as I spend time in the Word in preparation to teach. As I teach, I'm reinforcing my core by what I have studied from God's Word. Sometimes our believing, <laughs> sometimes our believing is mountain moving faith, and we speak to mountains, and we're fully persuaded that when we speak to that mountain, it's going to move. You know what? And then there's other times, conversely, <laughs> that you know, though when we speak to mountains, it's like it's like the mountain is trying to move us. You ever, ever have a, something you believe in God for, you're praying about, and it's like, oh, it seems like this mountain is moving me. What, what am I saying? I'm saying sometimes when things don't happen the way we want them to, they move us from the core position of our faith. Our core says, yes, God is more than able. The situation is saying, eh, it don't look so good. <laughs> it doesn't look like anything's happened. So what, what happens? The mountain moves us instead of us moving the mountain. This, this ought not be. How can we develop a walk with God? This is the question that I'm, I'm asking myself even. How can I develop a walk with God that is consistent? Faith is more than believing. Faith does something. Faith puts into action what we actually believe in our heart. Faith doesn't just think good thoughts about God's Word. <laughs> it doesn't just say, I agree with God's Word. Faith actually uses God's Word as a tool. 
in the, in, in the spiritual battles that we fight, it seems like many times we're fighting natural battles because we're dealing with people. But everything for a believer, once we sign on to this thing called Christianity, we enter into a whole new realm of living. I mean, we begin to see things differently, but the world continually tells us and our emotions continually tell us that we're fighting a fight against people or against events or circumstances or things going on in the world. You know what? We're not fighting a battle against people. We're not fighting a battle against the government even. Our battle is a spiritual battle. And with that spiritual battle comes from the Word of God the weapons that we can fight. See, when we begin to see spiritual battles for what they really are, then our core belief system is strengthened when we receive the instructions, if you will, on how to use our tools, use our weapons. When what we believe about God's Word becomes what we do, then faith is activated and mountains are moved. See, God 